Hello and uh, welcome to yet another chat show on the YouTube channel of the Indian Society of Gastroenterology, Kerala Chapter. In conversation with me today is a legend in gastroenterology, a person who has been in this scene for close to, I think, four decades or five decades, now five decades going. Dr. Philip Augustine. Dr. Philip Augustine is otherwise known as the father of interventional gastroenterology in Kerala as well as one of the fathers in the, in, in the country. Welcome to you, Dr. Philip, on Thank this you. show. I hope you are comfortable today. Sure. Well, uh, in my conversation with you, I would probably be referring to uh, your journey as well as uh, your role as an interventional gastroenterology and of course I would also seek your opinion on a few things later on during the conversation. Okay. First of all I'd like to ask you this label of father of interventional gastroenterology how heavy does it weigh on your shoulders even today? Uh, well uh, first of all I'm, uh uh, glad you asked that question and I'll be proud to wear that matter. That's what I, I want to tell you first. Because uh, looking back, you know, this is uh, 40 plus years in gastroenterology. Um, I've actually done quite a bit of contribution to the field, especially in the field of interventional uh, endoscopy. Intervention gas went on. Um, not only in Kerala, in the country as well. Um, I was looking back and found that I was a member of the team which did the first injection sclerotherapy for esophageal varices in the country in PGI along with Professor Delavery and Dr. Abraham Koshi. And I was the first one to introduce. Uh, endoscopic varicell ligation for gastric varices in the country in 1987. And uh, I was the first one to do ERCP and uh, swing throttle and William standing as a gastroenterologist. Dr. Krishnarao did it first in India, but uh, uh, if, if a gastroenterologist did it first, he was a surgeon, it was me. Well, I have heard stories about that particular procedure. Yes. Uh, and lots of uh, stories. Uh, I was the first one to give hands-on training for several uh, eminent gastroenterologists who are doing uh, interventional gastroenterology endoscopy in a big way in India and having their own leadership and mentorship. Well, in recognition of all this, of course, he was decorated with the title of Padma Shri and uh, I should be quick also to tell that he has been decorated so many times that uh, Philip Augustine now, that's why he is the legend that he is. Now, uh, I would like to ask you a, a very specific question about your early days. Now, in your early days, I, as I would say, the world in your, in your feet, you could have gone anywhere. But you chose a small village or a township, if I could say that. Uh, in the suburbs, that was not even suburbs, it's far away from Cochin. Uh, did you think at that time you were taking a big risk of doing that? You could have settled, or you have chosen Trivandrum, yeah. Cochin, anyway. Yeah, I had several uh, options. Uh, it was a panchayat, Uttar Pradesh panchayat. Panchayat. In okay. 1983, when I started the first private sector gastroenterology center, probably in the country, in a big way with endoscopy and then team of medico surgical gas control. Which year was that? 1983. 83. I selected that place because it was a homecoming for me. I was there for four years, you know, after my MD from Old Institute. I worked as a general physician at Devamada Hospital, Gotha. And when I went for a specialization in gas ontology to BJ Chandigarh, the ownership of that uh, hospital belongs to the church. I belong to the Catholic Church. And the nuns were running that institution. It's a mission, mission hospital. I actually liked the ambience, you know, as a physician there. In four years' time, I could bring that 
75 bed in hospital, 350 bed in hospital as a general physician. And I had total freedom there. There was no peer pressure on me. I was all in all. So I could do whatever I wanted and they supported me. And uh, I had several options, as you said, uh, for joining uh, medical college. In fact, uh, uh, St. George Medical College actually requested me to join. Several others. No, I think you could have stayed back in all the institutes. I could have stayed back in all the institutes. I could have stayed back in uh, PJ earlier. But then you know that uh, uh, homecoming feeling. And I knew I could do things, you know. And uh, I had discussed with the management that they would support me in, you know, bringing in technology there. And that time getting endoscopy was the main thing. And also interventional radiology was. So they had promised they could not achieve it, but I helped them to bring in all the uh, necessary basic uh, infrastructure needed for a meaningful gastroenterology practice at that time. So basically a freedom to take decisions, freedom to expand, freedom to grow and, and maybe your first tryst as an administrator and uh, yes. uh, well we'll come to that later. But that was four decades back, now four decades. Now in these four decades, if I could just ask you uh, I know you have categorically mentioned you don't have a role model, but it's difficult for me to imagine that a person like you would not have a role model. If I were to ask you who was your role model, maybe you could have a role model in uh, clinical gastroenterology, you could have a role model in endoscopy, whatever it is, but who, was your, who were your role models uh, uh, looking back at your career? Uh, I, I, I'm, I know, many people have asked me this question. And I have wondered and I have searched also. I did not uh, point out a person so far. So I won't be able to tell you that there was a role model. So it was a passion that I should do things. So I am a very keen observer of uh, uh, people and the society. So I have been, uh, you know, uh, observing what are the needs for that small town and for the state of Kerala and when I went for gastroenterology I went to premier institutions for post graduation. One was all industrial medical sciences OMD and PJ Chandler, you know, you also were there. At that time was the pre most eminent place for here. So I had the confidence that I have got the best training this country can offer. And then it was up to me to, you know, find new parts. But okay, I would probably twist it a little bit and ask you I because I want to pin you on the down on this. Someone who has influenced you in, in your life, in, in thinking, your thought process, your actions, someone who's be, had a major role in, uh, in, 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 your, in your life? Um, if at all I can point out a person, it was Professor Ramama Sahuja, the Professor of Medicine in the Institute of Medical Science, a very kind uh, professor was, you know, he was actually uh, the one who helped me to get admission for MD at those, uh, at those time in Holland Institute because I had applied late to the institute. Uh, I had, uh, I was selected in Toronto Medical College for MD, so I never bothered to uh, apply anywhere. So two of my professors in Cotton uh, Medical College, where I did my business, insisted that I should join all Indian Institute. They said, yeah, even if it is too late, you please write to Professor Ramama Sahuja. He trained in Madras. He was a refugee from Pakistan during the partition and all that. So he likes the South Indians and a lot of Malayalis have trained with, under him and he would like to have you just send your bio data and your marks and all that. Exactly like that. <coughs> I wrote to him. So at that time, there was a uh, provision to take senior house agents under the scheme called uh, uh, the Medical Superintendent Scooter. There was one vacant there and uh, Professor B. N. B. Rao, I remember, another kind, nice gentleman, he was a Medical Superintendent, a retired military officer and he and Professor Ahuja helped me to get in there. And once you are in the Old India Institute, your uh, uh, National Medical Library is installed. So that was an entirely different scenario from Kote Medical College. So you had the uh, good teachers there and you had the ambience. Those days there was no internet or anything, you had to go to the uh, library and the uh, all industrial library was good plus you had the additional advantage. So 
that was probably a so that's why you think uh, uh, yeah okay yeah. Then so I, MMS Ahuja. Okay, um, now down your career over the last uh, four decades, uh, of course, you did start off as a clinical gastroenterologist, endoscopy, and then administrator. Obviously, then you started playing a major role in administration. Now, uh, what did you do differently to sort of take over or, or, or switch your mantle from a practicing gastroenterologist to an administrator and what are the challenges you faced? Yeah, this was the uh, same, uh, you know, uh, habit of observing the surroundings, you know. Um, I used to read and find out what is happening in the uh, field of medicine, in the field of gastroenterology around the world. And I knew endoscopy is coming in a big way. Interventional radiology is coming in a big way, and of course, clinical research. That was one field nobody was touching in Kerala. So I uh, made it a point to go and visit centers which have excelled in these areas. In that uh, respect, I should say the management in Kutarpuram supported me to go abroad and visit centers. One major center I visited was Professor. Nip Sohendra Center, and that you know that you have been there, and that's a place where you feel that you know you are somebody. And, uh, Sohendra was a nice man; he would let you observe whatever they were doing, and these interventions in the ESOP was happening those days. So I learned the tricks, and then of course I came and trained myself and uh, started this. Plus. Uh, I went to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin Medical College. I had a chance to uh, learn uh, ultrasonography because there was no radiology in those days. I wanted ultrasound for, it was a, like an extension of the hand of the clinician. So I wanted that. The management said they will buy the ultrasound, first in uh, Kerala at that time from GE company. And they offered training for me. So it was an opportunity to one of the, to one of the best centers in America and that also was a good exposure for me. When I came back, I started all this and started training. But one thing I did was, whatever I learned, I imparted the training to my colleagues. But that was about the medical training. But uh, what yeah. I'm trying to ask you yeah, is, I understand as an administrator. coming to that. So having done that, you know, I found that places where I worked, like Kudarva Devamala Hospital, and even previous Memorial Hospital was too small for us. There were a lot of limitations. We were doing things better than many other people at that time, but I wanted to do much better because I had seen these centers. I had also visited the center of Henry Hall in France where a lot of microtology was run. Uh, Didier Lembrick in Paris where interventional hepatoradiology was run. So I, I learned the technique myself. You know, if you have the uh, you know, passion. You can learn anything. That's what I did. So, interventions was in my blood. So, endoscopic interventions, radiology, then a complementary uh, setup for gastroenterology, liver, and of course, we made a big team of uh, surgeons also. So, I knew that the uh, management will not be able to support us in any way. It Therefore, you decided to become the management. I decided to become the Okay, but then how was it on that side? You know, uh, when a doctor becomes an administrator and has to deal with doctors, now you are changing from one side of the table to the other side. Now, how was it, uh, how was it experience? Doctors would have had a lot of expectations from you as a doctor turned administrator. I think uh, my situation was a little unique because I never so the doctors on the other side, you know. Being an administrator, my main work was, you know, clinical work. You know. So I was one among them. And I had selected a few chosen people to run the institute, Lakeshore Hospital, which I created, uh, meaningfully, with a human face. Not like a corporate hospital, as we know, many people fear now. But this was, uh, uh, whoever worked with me, when I left, many of my colleagues said, why are you here? Please stay back. Because they had apprehensions. That this sort of management, they, 
will never expect, they will not ever get. So that was true also, later on I realized. But then, you know, I had my intention, I was focused on clinical medicine, clinical research, and bring in technology and to help as many people as possible. By that time we had a large clientele of patients from Kerala and outside and even abroad. We are in conversation with uh, Dr. Philip Augustine and uh, I am trying to probe into his mind as far as the role of administrator in medicine is concerned. But Philip, my uh, question to you, of course, would be a series of rapid-fire questions. The first one is about clinical gastroenterology. Uh, I had been discussing with uh, Professor K. V. Nair also a little, uh, 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 a little while ago, and uh, we were talking about clinical gastroenterology under threat of becoming extinct as a specialty. What do you think about that? Uh, that's my fear too. In not only in gastroenterology, it is creeping in many specialities. But you no, know, if you have, if you want to be a doctor, you have to be a clinician first. Of course, the age of artificial intelligence and things are coming. But then you know, you have to have a personal one-to-one -one contact with your patient, your eye contact, your body language, and your counseling. That has to be there, you know. I am a proponent of clinical gastroenterology, clinical medicine, always. But you don't have to forego clinical gastroenterology to become a, an endoscopist or an interventionist. But I have shown a model in this state and in this country that nobody can run a meaningful practice, a specialty practice, single-handedly anymore. So you have to have a team, a trusted team. You have to build that, to take your uh, colleagues into confidence, give them the training which you have acquired. That's what I have done and maybe that is one reason I am still going on. Yes, yes. In fact, you are probably a trailblazer as far as teamwork in gastroenterology is concerned. It My is. second question uh, to you is about uh, uh, the younger gastroenterology. The, the new breed of gastroenterologists who pass out. Uh, do you think that they should be changing their focus a little bit on uh, chasing super, uh, super uh, subspecialties is concerned, spend some time in big departments and then decide what is good for them? Not only a little bit, they have to do a lot. Now, what I'm seeing is, I tell it in many forums, is a uh, triumph of technology or judgment. People are going after technology, technology, technology. It is good to acquire technology, but then <coughs> who are you going to give the benefit of this? They are the patients. So you have to take them into confidence. You have to spend time in clinical medicine. And if you are in a group, in a major institution, you have exposure to all of this. And <clears throat> nowadays, you cannot go on doing everything, you know. The technologies are doing so much, you focus in your field. Okay. That's what uh, I would like. That's and good. the third is, what is your dream for the future of gastroenterology in Kerala? No, I, 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 I have said it uh, earlier also. See, I'm worried about the large number of youngsters coming out of the teaching institutions, private institutions, the numbers are many. And I'm sure a stage will come, it's already started coming, they won't be able to absorb all of them into institutions. So my advice would be, rather than, you know, they can't go and create institutions, but what they can do is form a group, a well-knit group, and start your own uh, business model. This is just like office practice in the best. You do investigations and uh, consultations in your setup. Get to the, uh, all uh, the group, uh, group. group there. And then for admissions and further treatment, you attach to major institutions. So I think uh, a time will come when 
this office practice and guru practice will come and that, that will be for them. That is a brilliant bit of advice. In fact, that was a uh, YouTube channel of uh, ISG Kerala chapter in conversation with Padma Shri, Dr. Philip Augustine. Um, when I talk of Philip Augustine, I, one thing that actually has stuck onto my mind and he says, he used to say that, you know, the no, number of patients I see, 90 to 95 percent I know I'm right, 5 to 10 percent anyone can go wrong, I'm willing to accept that. But then as long as we are able to accept these challenges, I think that is the growth of a medical practitioner. You accept, you grow over, you learn from challenges. And of course, the advice to youngsters, I think, is very well taken. Thank you very much, Dr. Philip, for having joined us. Uh, and that brings to an end this conversation. Dr. G. N. Ramesh signing off and ready to come to you again with some more personalities, some more conversations. Thank you.